little bit about today about training a off the racetrack horse. Okay, he's a thoroughbred. He ran as a two and a three year old. Uh, I believe he's about four now. He injured his leg, so uh, they took the papers away and uh, they gave him away, so he'll never be able to be raced again. Okay, which is a good deal. Now, what I do with my racehorses when I bring them off the racetrack is the first thing I do is I like to put a full cheek bit on him. All right, which what he has right here. He's got a real nice one with a with a copper inlay in it, so it's really smooth and it makes his mouth water quite a bit. Okay, now there's something about these race horses uh, that are off the track that uh, you have to deal with. Um, the first thing is is you have to change them from to go to to riding English. Uh, what you have to do with the chains is you have to make it gradual in order for it to stick and to be right, uh, make it easier on the horse because <clears throat> what this horse knows is this horse knows only what he's learned on the racetrack for the most part. And uh, what the, the, the way their equipment is set up on the racetrack is a lot different than, than, than what we're going to use today. So gradually we've switched him around. So first of all, they use a, a whip on the racetrack, okay? So I, I've replaced that whip, that crop. Oh, do you need to get your phone? No. I replaced that crop with these, with these short uh, spurs. Now, most of these horses have never had a set of spurs like this used on them. So I just go with a real short set, and, uh, and you just barely want to touch them with them whenever you first start, okay? Now, the other thing that, it, that, that I do is I try to take the whip away right away because a lot of these horses, you know, they get that, you get to moving your whip around and they sure get excited, okay? So, and the other thing, like with him, when I first start him, is I start him the way they would on the racetrack, okay? And they use a martingale. So I run a martingale through there and, uh, and I'll get him started with that. And then, like today's going to be his first day, and I'm going to take the martingale off. But when you take that martingale off, <clears throat> you have to remember that on the racetrack, whenever he goes down up on the racetrack without a martingale, that means he's going to run. Okay? That means they're either going to breeze him or he's going to he's going to go to a, a race. He's going to go up to a race. That's those are the only times that the martingale are taken off. So <clears throat> with that, bear that in mind whenever you go to ride your, your race horse. Uh, you know, if you get him home and then you decide to, okay, you just put him like this, but when you first get him home off the track and you're going to try to ride him without a martingale like this, you're probably going to have some problems, okay? Because he's not going to understand what you want. He's thinking race, all right? So, and it takes a while to get these mind, the horse's mind off the racetrack and to, you know, just to get him back normal get him into a different environment so you have to change a lot of things okay so the first thing I do is I eliminate the riding crop okay that's the first thing I do now later on in his training I'll bring the riding crop back you know if, if he's going to go into dressage training or whatever but you have to introduce it to him slowly okay you, you, you can't be abusive with him and, and with it uh, on him so uh, you just got to take it nice and easy with him, and the spurs also, because if you touch him with these spurs, he's going to jump. He's not going to. He's not going to understand what you want. You just barely give him a little touch like that. Right now, he's interested over there. You see, but most of these, see, see how he moves off real quick. So you got to really be light about the spurs. Now today, I'm going to take the spurs off while I'm riding him. So we're going to change that around a little bit too. Okay. Um, I rode him with spurs because he kind of tends to want to slow up. The other thing about these horses <coughs> is they've been rode on the track. They've been rode like that, tight with their mouth, okay? Now, I've, I've, I've softened this colt up, as you could see right there, uh, to the point that he'll give to, to his mouth, okay? He'll flex, okay? When I ask him to give his head right there, uh, and I let it go right away, and so he knows that as soon as he gives his head, I'm going to let it go. Okay, so I'm able to position his head in, in whatever direction I want by doing that. Now, the other thing I want to mention is these horses run straight. They don't run in circles on the racetrack. They run straight and then they come around a bend. 
okay? So you get people who want to start them and they want to start running them in a circle. Well, these horses don't know how to run in a circle and their body has been built to run straight. So whenever you first start them, you're going to want to run them or, or, or you want to start working them on straight lines and then we'll start working your circles gradually, gradually, okay? Because they're going to be stiff. They, they come and they're used to being like this. They're, they're used to being stiff. They're not used to having any flexing, okay? It's rare that you can get a, a, a racehorse to flex, you know, like that really nice and easy because they're not used to it. They're stiff. They'll fight you, okay? So you gotta, you gotta, those are things that you have to work on and you have to work on bending their body. Get their body bent. But do it slow. Don't, don't try to rush it. And give them plenty of time so they can understand what you're looking for. Okay, that's just a short clip on, I uh, just want to make a short clip here on, on, on getting these horses started. Okay, thank you very much.